Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. My. <laughs> I don't know why I said I started saying I before I'm rusty. It's, in, it's this new year. This is the first one we've recorded. Uh, this is not a year. good sign. And I, I started... I'm Rhett. <laughs> new this year. I'm Link. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me explain why. All this. along. <laughs> no, you felt bad about starting it, and then you were like, well, I got to say it the right way. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, that's knew, what, that's what, what went through doing. my mind. <laughs> I, I was so ready to oh. say my part that I was like, I'm Link. And then as I heard myself say, I'm, I was like, oh. Well, this is appropriate. To be <laughs> this is appropriate because that was the first thing I wanted to talk about is what I screwed I'm, up. I am Link. What I screwed up. Um, in front of a a different audience <laughs> last night. Yeah, Brett. I, uh, you know me. I don't like. I don't. I don't like to screw things up. You know, it, it, it's it, to a pathological point. Uh, maybe it was growing up in a family where screwing up wasn't well tolerated. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to bring it up unless you wanted to bring it up, uh, but since you want to talk about it, you I did think bring it's it up good. in the moment. Well, though. <laughs> yeah, but while I was still on stage. Okay, well, let's start at the beginning. But I it's think... my fault. So we had the privilege and honor of um, presenting at the seventy fifth. Mm-hmm. Emmys, not the real Emmys. Let's be real. I mean, well, no, real, they're real Emmys, but it was the Creative Arts Emmys. It wasn't the the, the, the main Emmys that you see on primetime television. We made the mistake of thinking that it was a lesser Emmys just because it wasn't televised. It was still recorded and it, it's still going to be it was, broadcast. It is televised somewhere, like FXX or something. Um, but the moment we showed up. I mean, well, we, had, reason, we had to wear tuxes. The reason we didn't think it was as big of a deal as it was is because we were both confused. Yeah, we Because were. like 12 or 13 years ago, yeah. I don't even think we lived in L.A. at the time. We had just moved here. We were asked to MC to host some Emmy thing that was over there at the, uh, the Dolby Theater or something. Right, we hosted, and we the, thought that that was the Creative Arts <laughs> Emmys, and we—I don't even remember anything about that. We hosted the whole thing. We were trying to be funny. I'm sure we were somewhat annoying. They were giving out Emmys there too, but it was, yeah, that was less than this. Because the moment we showed up in our tuxes, because we were told to wear tuxes, I mean, everybody was—I mean, this was this is a much bigger deal than I had realized. The Queer Eye guys were there. Uh, got to meet Tim Robinson. Was very excited about that. And then he won the John first Mulaney award, which was, was there. short form comedy. So Olivia Tim, Munn, Tim show won that. RuPaul, Kiki Palmer. You know, there's like recognizable celebs there. The night before was the scripted Emmys that aren't in the televised version, and the night that we were there was the unscripted, unscripted. Emmys that just don't make it in the televised version because everything can't make it. So. And, and then they seat us, and we're literally in the center on the front row. Yeah, I was like, how did we get these seats? Why, and I, why, did, why did we get these I seats? I told Christy this morning, I was like, this is a much bigger deal than we realized, and I actually started to get nervous. And um, I, wasn't, I was actually proud of myself for not being nervous in the like weeks leading up to it, because a lot of times when you're about to do something that's out of your comfort zone in front of a group of people that... You know, there's a little bit of a chip on the shoulder of a YouTuber going into that environment that you're kind of thinking like, oh, YouTuber. And so I was like, but you know what? I'm actually feeling good about it because I'm not really concerned about what these people think about me. Also not realizing that it would be the crowd that it was. Carol Burnett. Carol was Burnett was on the front seated row. Seated on the front row, like five seats down from us. And the first person who came out was Jeff Probst. Jeff Probst started the whole show. Oh, man, I love me some Jeff Probst. I, I got to meet me Jeff Probst. We got to get him on uh, Good Mythical Morning. Yes. Got to make that work. And they So then it was like, oh, crap. But this is, uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a thing. And they had sent us the script. It's a big stage. This is a full production. This is like steady cams roaming in front of us. Um, I'm like, act like you are meant to be here. They sent us the script ahead of time. And uh, I was like, this is a pretty good script. And I just made one change. I, I exchanged one joke mm -hmm. and felt pretty good about it. 
They did put us two hours and twenty minutes. Two into hours the and show. twenty minutes into the show, of, and it was a two Almost hour the last thing. and thirty minute show. So that took some of the pressure off because on any of these shows, by the time you get to the second hour <laughs> or past that, people just kind of want to get to the after party. Yeah, and so I was the one that was supposed to start, and I had a teleprompter, which everybody. Uh, did. I, bu- I well, I'm just saying that. In my mind, having a teleprompter is the reason for why I said the thing that I said. But, which I told you ahead of time, when you were asking me to like make some changes or like, you wanna change this? And I was like, I'm just gonna stick to the teleprompter because that's how I maintain my composure in situations like this. It's like, I don't, I don't go off prompter. And, uh, cause it was like three lines and then you're done, right? Three lines from me, three lines from you and we're done. Yeah. And the first line was, in celebration of the 75th Emmys or something like that. And I literally said, in celebration of the 75th Emmys. (laughs) And and you realized it as you said it. Well, because I'm looking at the thing and I'm like. In celebration of the 75th Emmys. And I said, and so you gave me a moment to say, like, you were like, you've stuttered. You sputtered a little bit. Well, I was thinking of something clever to say. And you said. I can't remember what I you said. You said, I know I said 75th, I said 75th, and you said, yeah, you should probably say 75th. What I would have I said. I thought I said was, I thought what I said was, you can, you can, that's that's not the way you say it. Or you I can, thought you or, said, no, you should probably say 75th or something like that. I don't know, we'll watch it back on FXX. But what I thought about after it had happened was, oh, what I should have said <laughs> is I should have said 75th, yes, it's the new 75th. <laughs> and I would have gotten some laughs. At least I acknowledged that you said it. And then we went on to deliver these pre-written jokes that- I could have said something funnier too. Got a couple of laughs, uh, but then we were in between awards. I made a joke about Betty White being white. You did. But in celebration of the technological advancement of color television. That was the best joke. Um, but in between the awards, because we gave out two awards while they were showing the montage of the nominees, um, it got dark, and you, you, you leaned over to me, and you said, "Yeah, seventy fifth, really? That's not I, what I said. A, as if that's not as what I if said. I wasn't already d- no. just drowning in shame. Okay, I my best friend leans over and says, 75th? really? <laughs> okay, here's what really happened. I was drowning in shame up. There. The lights go down. Your boy was drowning the, in shame. It, I, and you piled on. I could tell that you were not happy with yourself because you were standing there motionless, just looking into nothing. <laughs> you were looking inside of your brain. I had like, one thing. I had one thing to do. Say 75th. This is the third the word. The thing that I've always said when I say 75th. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've never said 75th. <laughs> it's like Bilbo Baggins. 11, <laughs> 11, I'm, I'm 111th. I'm a uh, hobby. There's so many good jokes. Like if I had that small wonder thing where she could like pause time or go back, I don't know. If I had the ring where you could go back in time, there's so many things that I could say. I'm a hobbit. Of course I could just say 75th. Listen, I just got back from New Zealand. The ring makes you invisible. It does not make you go no, back no, in yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, talk- I'm talking about a different ring. There's one ring, Rhett. No, no, no. <laughs> to rule them all. I'm talking about a ring that takes you back in time to then well, say there are other separate rings. thing about being a hobbit. Um, but what I said, so I knew that you were kind of stewing or in, in shame. And so you wanted to rub but it a little I, bit. No! Well, I was trying to make you feel better, but I had By to- By saying 75? I had to say something. Really? I, what I said was- <laughs> That's not what I remember. I mean, and of course, you know, the crowd is still out there. Everybody that's Everybody's still like thinking about thinking it. about that. Of All, course, only thinking about seventy five. That's the only thing they're thinking about. So yeah, I lean over to you and I'm like, seventy five, huh? That's what I said. Seventy five, huh? Oh, <laughs> is, is that's better. <laughs> I mean, it was. I I let you off easy, man. I was like, man, you really screwed the pooch, man. You made us both look stupid. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it, it didn't matter to me. It didn't matter to me. Because it wasn't me. <laughs> no, I, I, it was fine, man. And, but I knew there wasn't anything I could say that would make you feel better in that moment because the lights were about to come up and we're about to give an award. Well, the thing that I, so the thing that I regretted wasn't necessarily saying 75th. I mean, obviously that was the thing, that was the error. 
it was in retrospect not then having the funny thing to say about screwing up, right? R- people, I mean, um, what's her name? Uh, you don't even remember her name. See, she screwed up too. The one that said television. Yeah, she said television. But then she said something funny. No, she said television. And she talked about the authenticity of reality television or something and said that she was kind of making a point. Right, right. Um, anyway. I felt bad for her. I really don't. Fine. I don't. I mean. And, and you recovered, man. You said your jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got out of it. I'm just saying that it was as I observed myself and how I reacted in that situation, mm-hmm. realizing that I was caring more about this than anyone else was caring. Everybody right. who was there, first of all, who was left, let's be honest, Tim yeah. Robinson had gone home. I looked down there because he was the one I was re- really worried about. He was gone. He's gone. Um, so many people have left two Car- hours and 20 minutes. Carol Burnett this. was still there. Carol Burnett was there, but she's 90. Yeah. She probably didn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... I, I think uh, you shouldn't beat yourself up over it. It, it was a it was an exercise in uh, humility, but also in the just the the much better to mess that up than to mess the joke up. That exactly. would have been much worse. That's what that's what my wonderful wife's told told me. She said, "Wife's wife's See, you're still doing it, man." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, new development, twenty twenty four. I've got two wives now. <laughs> oh, see, now you're recovering with ease. Yeah, Look you at see you. how uh, you see, polygamy. If I was that funny last night, if I could make a polygamy joke, it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, when I was talking to Jesse, she was like, "Well, when you said you screwed up, I thought maybe you had like said the wrong name when you opened the envelope, or you screwed a joke up, but you just screwed up seventy five. Come on, give 75. yourself a break. It's a it is a mistake that no one would ever make because how could you? <laughs> you could, like, where oh, does that where well, does that come from? You oh. read you read 75 and then the TH was on the next line or something? No, no, no. The only way one can make that joke, make that mistake is by reading the word set the the number 75. It wasn't 75th, it was written out 75 TH. And so in my brain I got to 75 and just saw 75. So I was just yeah. like the 75 75- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you re- you read it as literal as possible. I was too committed to sticking to the prompter. I told you, man. But I normally do better when I stick to the prompter. But apparently you can't stick so tightly to the prompter that you don't see the TH. Not in 2024, man. Yeah, so next time they invite us, oh, if they do, to the Emmys. If they don't, I'm not gonna, it'll be, it'll be we're going to know that. why. Right, right. Yeah, man. Listen, listen. Let me just let me look at me. Look at me. I want to get this hair off. Oh, I thought you were about to do some sort of. Uh, <laughs> you got a hair right here. I was like, Push that back. I was like, you thought I was gonna do some kind of magic. Look trick at me. To look make at me. me. Not feel shame. Look at me. I want you to let me <laughs> let me grab it back your neck. I want you to know that you are loved. And you are respected. I'm just saying, next time, <laughs> and you are next you are time, normally composed. Next time, I you sh- were composed. I shame myself in you that didn't, way. You didn't lose composure. Uh, what I would ask of you as a best friend is just to be like, "Hey, nobody cares," or so, just or like, "It's gonna be okay, man." Seventy five, huh? Yeah, I thought that was. <laughs> I thought I was. That Don't would make just light repeat of it. the thing that I just. <laughs> the only thing that I'm thinking right now is seventy five. Seventy five. Why did you say seventy five? And then your buddy leans over and says seventy <laughs> five. <laughs> huh? I'm sorry, man. I was. I was really just thinking. Yeah, I need to say something, and it's. Uh, well, um, sometimes it's better. I made not it worse. Anything at all? Shit, man. I did. I actually didn't realize that I had made it worse. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm okay now. <laughs> it was the first thing I thought about when I woke up, though. Uh, seven years Literally, old. like the, like as your brain is awakening to the world and you're beginning to orient yourself to the day. Like I just saw seventy five, and that's me. That's my problem. Not just the screw up, but the fact that that would be the first thing that I think about. If 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 the shoe was on the other foot, um, I feel like. Uh, it would have been, you know, better for everybody. Cause I put my foot in my mouth all the time. 
and you're always ready to take it out. Right. See now, see, I didn't, I didn't. That's what I, I failed you in not saying yep. something the, funnier than it, what I said. It really was a setup for you, and you failed. But really, I, that's who, I, that's, I said you some, should be feeling. Shame. I did say something, but I'm sorry that I didn't say something better. If you were me in that moment, you would have said something better. But I oh. would have been the butt of the joke. Um. Well, and that, and I, and you know what? That would have worked. That would have been the best for comedy. Yeah. I just don't. I see. I didn't have the instinct to publicly. Well, next time, really go for the. Hey, jugular. just be ready, man. I make mistakes too. It's tough. You got to be ready for me to make mistakes. Yeah, I make them quite a bit. Yeah, you need to stay in your lane, though. I'm the mistake maker. Yeah, see, that's not fair. No, I don't. It's not fair. Do hey, not. You, are you done thinking about it now? Twenty twenty like four is you? my year of mistakes. Oh, <laughs> just so you know. Do you feel? Like you can put this behind you, you can integrate this. Well, in a way you that know, I was, um, I was a bit preoccupied with the fact that I had gotten Clippers Lakers tickets for me and my family that I had secured before we ever got this gig, and I didn't really understand that we were going to be too. Even though it was in the, it was in the information that Jenna that you sent ahead of time, but I had failed to really read all that. Uh, and didn't realize that we were going to be giving our presentation like after the game had been going for an hour. Thankfully, it was literally in the Peacock Theater, which is right next to the Crypto.com arena. So it was just like walking over. But I was thinking about, man, I paid all this money for these tickets for this Clippers Lakers game, and I'm excited about it. Um, and then as I was getting changed after 75th and I was mm -hmm. walking over, I was like, but you know what? I'm going to watch my Clippers take out the Lakers, because you know that's what they're gonna do. And did they? They lost. Oh. So it was like L upon L. Oh. So and it, was you like, know, it was a double L. But you put, and you pulled like a reverse James Bond. You like had a duffel bag, and you went into the bathroom in a tux, and you came out in like LA Clippers gear. I did. I did. And left me with your bag. See, that's a pretty good friend. I do appreciate Didn't that make out, you, I carried your duffel bag. You carried my duffel bag. For, you, what did you do at that party with it? Uh, I, it was I like get, a big fanny pack. <laughs> no, I gave it to somebody to put in the car. Oh, good. Yeah, so I, I pawned I it like off you could pretty much immediately. I feel like you could rock a duffel. <laughs> yeah, I had a whole bit. Um, where's Rhett? Oh, he he's he's deflated in this duffel. Did you see uh, the seventy five? No, that, that was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty. He's good. He's completely. You should have said that I, earlier. I rolled him up <laughs> after he deflated and I put him in his duffel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you holding my bag. Oh god. That almost makes up for rubbing it in in the moment. I didn't rub it in. I didn't. Wasn't trying to <laughs> rub it in. Okay. Listen. I if it'll make you feel better, I had some big fails. Oh. Uh, on my epic New Zealand trip that I want to tell you about. Okay. Right after we tell you to go to mythical.com. Yes. And check out this amazing collection. You know what time it is. It's the time to look at a t shirt, another t shirt, Bam. a hoodie, sweatpants, we got, trucker hat. We got long sleeves. There's a whole freaking ensemble over there. Sweaties. You'll look good and you'll be comfy. It's gonna be great for you. You know what time it is, collection. Check it out at mythical.com. Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp in this particular ad is encouraging us to think about New Year's resolutions in the in the other direction, like to be even more positive. I, I like this. Mm -hmm. Like a new, thinking the opposite of New Year, New You. Instead, thinking about your life in terms of where you're crushing it, like where something's going well and how you can build on that. I like that. I like this too. Like for me, I'm an organizer, but there's always something else that I can organize. I'm gonna get even better at that. A better organizer, yeah. Maybe you finally organize one part of your space and you wanna tackle another. Or maybe exactly. you're taking your supplements every morning and now you wanna actually eat breakfast too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Therapy will help you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. 
you know we're huge advocates for therapy and want it to be accessible to everyone, so if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've made. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ear. Ear Biscuits is supported by Rosetta Stone. You know, sometimes you travel to other countries, Link, like you just traveled to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, you need help understanding the people in that country. Uh, well, a lot of them speak English. Oh, okay, well maybe this doesn't apply as much, but what if their accent is so strong that it <laughs> sounds like another language? Uh, <laughs> in comes Rosetta Stone. Not exactly, it's not for accents. I mean, it's for accents within languages. Just yes. let me stick with the copy. Right. Rosetta Stone is the most trusted language learning program available on desktop or as an app that truly immerses you in the language you want to learn. They've used trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered, some of which include Spanish, French, German, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, and Arabic. I don't see New Zealandish on there. No. But probably because that's English. Uh, or Maori. Rosetta Stone immerses you in many ways. There are no English translations, so you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. And with their built-in true accent feature that gives you feedback on your pronunciation, you'll be speaking like a pro in no time. Plus, it's an amazing value. A lifetime membership has all 25 languages for any and all trips or language needs in life a $399 program, but with our code, you can get it for just $199. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, you can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. That's 50% off for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash ear today. <laughs> I've been planning this trip to New Zealand for over a year. You know, during the pandemic, we were re-watching all of the Lord of the Rings extended DVD behind the scenes, I don't know. Hours and 16 hours. hours of uh, content and just getting back into realizing that, you know what, Middle Earth exists. It's a place called New Zealand. Where's Old Zealand? I don't know. Was there ever a Zealand? It had to be. It's like. I was there. I was there in New Zealand this whole time, and no one ever talked about the old one. There's got to you know, be an old like, Zealand. You know, this this one's definitely better. This is an improvement on the other one. Is Zealand just another word for Britain because all their money has the Queen on it? Maybe it was Sealand, and then New Zealand. Yeah, let's just conjecture at length about that because we don't know. We're not going to figure it out. It makes sense as Sealand. Uh, it's a fresh place, I will say that. It's totally worthy of being new. Beautiful, huh? Most beautiful place on earth? Uh, That's what they say. It is, it is extremely easy on the eyes, everywhere you look. So we had, I mean, the first thing that we booked over a year in advance was visiting Hobbiton. It's Middle Earth, that Hobbiton is literally there. Like well, the place where they—I mean, the place where they made the movie, not the place where J.R. Tolkien like. But it, in its in its entirety, like when you like that shot of Hobbiton, yeah. has all the homes. Yes, that's all completely intact. Yeah, well, they tore it all down after the Lord of the Rings production, and then took everything out. Uh, but then when they made the Hobbit movies, they rebuilt the entire thing on the same piece of sheep farmland, and then the the guy who owned the land, I don't know whose idea it was, but they, they hatched this idea that say, hey, listen, let's not make the mistake of tearing this down again. Right, yeah. Like, now we're gonna, this is gonna be a permanent fixture. More money than sheep, for sure. It's the, you know how when you go, if you have the privilege of going to Walt Disneyland or World or any of the Disney places, you're struck by how the attention to detail everywhere, like going from ride to ride and attraction to attraction, is not just about the attractions being amazing, but the entire experience is curated. It's not Six Flags. All the way, no, all the way down to like the trash cans and the smell in the air and like the, the mulch underneath the bushes that you can't see. 
Mm. This was the only experience I've been to where I bought a ticket and it topped that. Like the attention to detail. You felt like you were there. It was amazing. And then- um, Are there hobbits? There are no hobbits running around. It's, they're too tasteful for that. Okay. That were, all the hobbits <laughs> are, I don't know, they're, they don't like to leave. I don't know where, they didn't tell me where they were, but they weren't there. Okay. And they had, they had spaced out the tour groups well enough that like, you could see people on the other, you know, at different spots, but like it wasn't, you went through in a, in a group with a guide. And it was, so it was very- uh, Walking. Yeah, walking. You're walking right up to hobbit holes all around the thing. And you may be choosing to take a picture of every single hobbit hole like my wife did. I, on the other hand, just took a picture of one, maybe two hobbit holes, and then I looked at all the rest of them with my eyes and enjoyed it. But Ooh, I chose okay. not to pick that fight because the main thing about being on a family trip is knowing what battles to choose. Okay. And basically, if you can choose none, that's success. And I was pretty good at that, mm. you know? Didn't impact my experience, and I, I realized I wasn't gonna go into dad mode and like, look at that. Stop taking pictures and do this. Mm. You know, I, I was not in charge of my family's experience once we got there. They're that's a tour good, guide. They had their note. own choices to make with their own phones, and, with, and, and the, they could listen to the tour guide and do whatever they wanted. That unlocked a lot of happiness for me to hmm. abdicate all of my responsibilities as a dad to make sure that anyone else was having a good time. That's so a I, smart move. It may sound selfish, but hey, I set this thing up, I book the tickets, or I ask someone to book the tickets. Or I ask someone to ask someone to book the tickets. But it yeah, happened. Let's get real here. You know, come on. Yeah. So I did my part. Everybody, everybody loved Hobbiton. It was a highlight, and can you when you go into the now? I'm I'm experienced enough of a, a, of a filmmaker to know that they didn't shoot the inside of those Hobbit holes in the same place. They did that on a soundstage. <laughs> You're too smart for me, man. But what I do want to know is what's inside those Hobbit holes? Um, darkness. Okay. Utter darkness. No furnace? What I did Furniture? Not, not know was that they had remade the last two hobbit holes um, like two months before we got there. This was like fresh, fresh. They had remodeled so that you could go into, they split the group in half and you went into either the Proudfoot's hobbit hole or another hobbit hole that was similar but catered to another family. Okay. Like designed to another family. So you can't go into Bilbo's thing because they're not going to try to recreate. No, it. you can't go into Bag End. Um, but it's it. I, we didn't even know this was going to happen, and then they're like, "Okay, we're going to go into these Hobbit holes," and they, it was absolutely picture perfect in there. Like talk about the attention to detail, then went up like ten notches, like A little furniture, l beds, little bunk beds little sinks with running water. Could you get in the beds? Uh, yeah, if you wanted to. You could sit on the bed. Huh. You're just like, I mean, you're, you're, you're just walking around. There's no, there's no like. That's there, a there's good no, photo. There's op. no ropes. Christy could have taken a photo of that, you in the bed. Me and her in the bed. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we didn't do that. It, it was super impressive. Um, you just made a fart sound with your hands. Yeah, it's kind of undermining. <laughs> no, because that was me saying that. Super impressive. Got it. <laughs> you literally did. You did you know? Yeah. That, again, there's a few things for what? 2024. <laughs> Couple I, of wives, mistakes, and hand farts. What? Like, but you uh, did but, not know you were going to do that. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I was like, I'm going to wait for the perfect moment in his story to hand fart. You, I don't think they heard. See, look at how good you are at recovery. The, these <laughs> microphones are very directional link, so I think yeah. that this, probably, but, <laughs> but this. But but I heard it. You, you clap, I'm telling, I'm telling a story about the most beautiful thing I've encountered in the whole year. I you clapped your hands I and hand fart. exactly the right time. You, you said, picture perfect, and I was like, Burp. yep. <laughs> I thought that was good timing. It was it was good timing. You have good instincts, but you How didn't do it on purpose. How much does it cost? 
uh, per pr person. Uh, probably a lot, dude. The other thing I decided not to do was look at the cost. Okay, good. And I'm just being honest. I mean, once you decide to go to New Zealand and you're gonna, you have to do Hobbiton, you cannot look at the cost. Hmm. You know, you count the cost of going to New Zealand and not visiting Hobbiton. How That's many, the cost. How much time do you spend at Hobbiton? Is there a gift shop? Is there a restaurant? Uh, at the end of the freaking tour, you go to the, uh, it's not the Prancing Pony, it's the other one. And you get a beer. They give you a beer. Okay. Well, and, it's, and it's got alcohol in it. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about all the things that they could have done. They give you an out, and, and, and you can also get a cider. It also has alcohol in it. Do they sell fireworks? No. No. Okay. Uh, they don't do that. Do they, what do they sell? They sell like scones, uh, hairy feet that you could put on over your feet. Lots of, um, I, you know what? I don't know if they, they sell maps and they sell a lot of uh, models. Oh, yeah. I don't, know what, I don't know if they sold hairy feet. I, I went back to the car. And waited? Yeah. And your kids stayed in the. Yeah, because I was looking at, I was I'm trying to figure out the Lil, next thing Lily for us to do. Lily bought something at a map. She a map. bought a map. She bought a map. Okay. Um, the main thing I want to talk about, though, is it, I, I really wasn't mentally prepared for the main thing that was going to be an immersive experience that was entirely different than anything I've ever experienced that put me in the driver's seat of a situation that I was not prepared for. And that was quite literally getting in the driver's seat of my rental car, mm. and then, which was on the wrong side of the car, ex excuse me for saying it that way, on the other side of the car, and then having to drive on the other side of the roads in, over the course of our entire two-week trip. Now, don't you think just a little bit that this might be a recipe for a disaster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because sometimes you driving on the right side of the road can be a recipe for disaster. I mean, how many pedestrians have I almost, almost hit? Almost maimed, killed, or otherwise clipped here in America. That then, like that, you've seen firsthand. That then DM'd us later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least one. At least one. Um, many pedestrians have been taught the lesson of looking both ways. And that is the, by me. That is the real risk when in America. When you're in another country, first of all, as a pedestrian, being in a country where they drive on the other side of the road it's easy to get hit because you look the wrong way when you cross the street, which also means that it's probably easy for the hitting to happen. In London, I did not ever drive when I visited. But as a pedestrian, when I would cross every street, I would look down uh, at the crosswalk and they would have signs everywhere on the, on, the, on the pavement. And they would say, look right. Everywhere you look, look right, look right. None of that in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Like, no pedestrian look right anywhere. Now, when I got my rental car, I mean, you're fresh off the plane. You're, you've, you've flown for over 11 hours. You, you're on the precipice of your wildest dreams coming true, but you're jet lagged, and, you know, it's, it, it's, it's 6 a.m., but I don't know what. It's the day before, and what is going on? And I get in the car, and... I'm in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, I've, like, gotten in the car completely. So you didn't think about this until that moment? I, the thought crossed my mind, but then I'm like, ah, I should just think about it later. You know, I'm, think about it later. And so the later was when I was in the passenger seat well, looking for the steering wheel. Because, you know, when I went to Scotland, I, there's a little difference in our personalities here, and I knew I was going to be driving all throughout Scotland, and then I was gonna have to drive all the way from from the Highlands all the way to London over yeah. the course of a few days. I and I was driving a big van, like a mult, like yeah, a with your extended family passenger in van. And uh, so I watched videos about like how to like get your brain ready for for it. And even having done that, like you 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 prepared. I prepared, and I still wasn't prepared. And the roundabouts. Oh, let me get to that. So. Okay, so you prepared. I didn't. I got out of the car. I walked around. I got in the driver's seat. And to the left of the steering wheel, which is the middle of the car, crazy, right? 
there's a little sticker and it says, keep left. Like somebody put a sticker on there, keep left. I'm like, okay, okay. It's that simple. It's just that simple. Ugh, scary. And then I'm like, and every time I get in a rental car in America, it takes me at least 15 minutes to put that thing in drive. I'm just going to say it. You know, you got to, you got to connect your phone with the, 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 the car play. And you got to make sure that works because you want the GPS to be there. You don't want to be fiddle farting with that or the music. And then, there you go. <laughs> you got to get better at the hand farts if you're going to try to punctuate my stories with them. I'm trying to fiddle fart. I'm I'm, you know, you got you to adjust the mirrors. You got to know where the emergency brake is. You got to know how to adjust everything so that you're not fiddle farting around once you get on the road. Right. And now, so I did all of that. And then it was like, there was an extra beat. It's like, okay, I'm putting it in drive. Even putting it in drive with your other hand. Not easy. It's weird. It was, uh, uh, it's, it was like, I couldn't do it. It's like, it's like, it's like writing a letter with your, with your, with your, with your off hand. Well, not quite, but yeah. Or just writing a letter because nobody does that anymore. That's it's better. like, oh, yeah. awkward. I put it in drive and I start to ease out. And man, I mean, the spatial, spatial just uh, identity of the car is so difficult. Every, and I'm, you know, I'm driving to get out of an airport. This is like the worst. It's, it's like the start is an obstacle course. I mean, there's more pedestrians walking around everywhere there than anywhere else. And, and people who don't know where they're going right. and who are experiencing the same thing that I'm experiencing. A bunch of Americans getting in the cars that are going the wrong or way. Or the majority of the earth drives on the same side as us. So it's not just Americans who are figuring this crap out. What is, what is the breakdown of that? It's just a British thing and then they're the, the British colonies. But they did a, I mean, they did a lot of uh, colonizing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So, I don't know, like, what is the percentage breakdown of that, Jamie, of what, uh, what percentage of the world drives on the right side of the road and the left side of the road? Let's see here. It looks like, it doesn't give me a percentage, but it says, oh, around 30% of the world drives on the left. Okay, but that's yeah. still the minority. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I didn't know it was that that. Seventy percent of the world, seventy percent of the people going through there. Let's just say, if this going worked. Because I guess I'm all of South America drives on the right side of the road. Yeah. I decided, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna get in behind somebody and I'm gonna take it slow. And everything was okay. You know, once you got on a split lane road, it was like two lanes in a median and the two lanes, and then it really just came about like, okay, I want to go slow. And I, I want to really pace myself, and I don't want to make my family more nervous than they already are and should be. What did you find to be the most challenging thing? Staying in the far left lane when I wanted to be slow. And then after a while, not being lulled into getting back into the right lane to go slow. And then when I... Later, when I'm on a two-lane road, not being lulled into the fact that that right lane is oncoming traffic and not the fast lane, because the first that was the first thing I was introduced to split split lane highway. Um, it then we get out into the country because we were staying out uh, outside of Auckland, and like for, first of all, this the most bucolic scenery in the the central part of the Northern Island is just like rolling green hills with sheep and cows all over them. That, and then an occasional house. Mm -hmm. Just not a lot more than that. Absolutely beautiful. Even if it is raining a lot more than they said it would, which made it a little bit depressing at first. Um, there are, once you get out of the city, there are no stop lights. There are no stop signs. There are just what I call yield signs, but they, they look like a yield sign and they just say, make way. And what I interpreted that to mean was, I'm coming through, make way. I didn't stop for anything, but I'm pretty sure I would have yielded in a roundabout if somebody was curving around. The roundabouts, when you're rounding them about the opposite way, are it's pretty much a mind screw. Yeah. Um, but I was doing okay. The key was, and I didn't watch any videos, was just go slow. Just follow other people. And just trust. Until you have to lead. 
And then we had to find a pharmacy and we went, we went back into town and there was like stress for finding a pharmacy and like the, the place where the pharmacy was supposed to be wasn't there. And here I'm back into town and I'm on the left hand side, but I have to turn right. And there's cars coming across and like, uh, I think I'm going to turn right here. And now, I, oh crap, no, it's up there. And then I'm making a last second decision to turn right across traffic into a side street where I think this pharmacy is back in Auckland. And I just, and I decided to pull out in front of somebody. Good. And so I gunned it. And Make way. So then I gunned it and I turn, and then I see that there's a car in the street that's coming out, but then there's a space to the right of the car when I'm looking at the car, and there's oh, a space no. to the left of the car. Stay left. That's on the sticker. Stay left. And I'm going, and I just don't want to get hit by the car that I've turned in front of, okay, and I've right. literally just vroom, gunned this thing. Mm. And so I make an instinctive yeah, self-preservation decision to just go to the right of the guy who's stopped. Okay. Uh, what the pedestrian didn't know was the that pedestrian. I was going to do this. Oh, the pedestrian is suddenly here. There was a pedestrian <laughs> walking behind. Oh. The car who was stopped that I, so he had crossed and, and I should have gone to the left where the pedestrian had just crossed. Yeah. The pedestrian was now behind the car, which he shouldn't have been. Tall guy though. Definitely his fault. <laughs> and then. That's probably the 75th I careened, time he's done this. I careened right, <laughs> I, like, I didn't see him until he was beside me. Like he got, he like popped back out of the way and like threw his arms out. And then he kind of faded he off. Could, into, he could look and see you were an American just by looking at you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And I, I, uh, I went another block, and there was no pharmacy there. Oh, oh. so did you were was, wrong? Was, you were wrong was, on every. Just for nothing. <laughs> but um, so I had to turn around. I was like, "What'd your family I was, say?" I was like, "Damn, I, I hope that pedestrian is still not there." Uh, they weren't. Christy just goes into deep breathing now. Yeah, good for her. Uh, she doesn't say anything anymore. It's just, <laughs> she, she, she turns into a tea kettle. Yeah, after 23 years of marriage, <laughs> she has found the best way forward link is she deep goes, breathing. Her eyes are, they, her eyes just, kind of, it's kind of like, she's like she's a Buddha. Her eyes just get real thin and just like, just, air just seeps out forever. That's all she could do. It's just, just like, talk That's about all she could do. Whoosh, and, her, and it's a slow <laughs> head shake. And then she's like, at every other time we stop, she's like, go to that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the left. Yeah, you you, know? ask, you asked like, for it. And I couldn't. There's nothing I could say to her. Uh, so that was early on in the trip. I got better and better. I gained confidence to the point where I was like, you know, I kind of like this side of the road. It's better. I, I, I think I'll bring this back to America. I definitely <laughs> love the fact that, like, there's there's no stop signs. There's no stop lights. It's all roundabouts and give ways. You do, there's a sense of momentum mm. in New Zealand. That's like, if you can keep going, just keep going. And, and you might have to slow down and, like, you can do that go in less something. populated places. Yeah, I, you can't do that in it's really nice. Los Angeles. It's really nice. I, I love that. The now, thing that I found the most challenging, and and I had an observer, right? Because my brother was also driving, <laughs> and we would he, sometimes he in would an, be in the front, okay. and sometimes he would be in the back. And I remember we had been driving for a couple of days, and I was like talking to him and my dad, who were behind me, and I was like, I think I'm getting the hang of this, and they were like, Really? Yeah. They were like, well, what we have observed, and first of all, we were in like rural Scotland where I swear the roads are not as wide as they are in America. I mean, no, they're not. They, they weren't there either. Those roads are so tiny. They were, they were like, your. Every bridge is single. Left wheel, because you're on the right side of the car, like your left wheel is on the line on the side of the road. Yes. And that's increasing. Because you don't, because you don't want to get hit yep, by the oncoming yep. traffic and you're not used to accommodating for that side of the car. You're used to accommodating for this side of the yes, car. Yes, so there was a, Chrissy was like, and even Lincoln, you know, Lincoln never speaks up about this stuff. Like, he ne he's never says anything. He's, he's a middle child. He's like, <laughs> and then he's, and he's not even, the, he's in the very back of the car, like two rows back, alone. And all of a sudden, we're, uh, you know, I just hear him say, 
Dad, you're kind of getting close to the side of the road. A lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's inevitable. Um, you have this instinct to like stay away from like you. You have this hyper awareness of oncoming traffic, mm -hmm. and so you drift over there to the left to the point where like I'm hitting the rumble strips a lot. If yeah. they were rumble strips, I, I did that quite a bit. I still had a lot of confidence by the by the end of the thing. Christian and I had a had a a little getaway one morning where we got a massage. Hmm. Once we had gotten down to. Uh, Queensland, now, do Queenstown. They, do they start the massage on the other side of your body? <laughs> yeah. And um, we were super relaxed. We came out of that. We get back into the car. I'm like, we're going to go grab some food before we go back. And I was trying to just decide. I pulled up to the road. It was a two-lane road. And I was trying to decide, am I going to go left to this pizza place or am I going to go right to this other place? And I was like making a last-second decision. And then that's when you get into trouble. You got to make completely calculated decisions. Link can't be making last minute decisions. Yeah, I, th I thought you already knew that. I had confidence. That's dangerous. And so I decide that I'm gonna go right. And I look to my left and there's no car coming. Right, uh, in my immediate lane on the left. But what about to because, the right? Because, spoiler alert, cars don't come towards you on the left lane. On the immediate lane. Yeah. Everyone else is also driving on the left side of the road. Not just you. So I looked left. There was nobody coming because no one would ever be coming yep. in that lane. And I, I start turning right instinctively. Again, I just revert it. And immediately, Hark! like someone was laid on the horn, slammed on brakes, and I slam on brakes. And it's a, it's a really nice Land Rover, which goes past me and then slams completely on brakes in the road and stops to my left. And gets out. The car stops, and there's this moment where it's like, oh, he still stopped. He still stopped. Oh, his caution lights are on. He's getting out of his truck, and he's in a huff. Well, yeah. He's an, he's an old man. He's kind of like hunched over. His, his shirt's tucked into his pants, and his pants are up really high. That he just shit in a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and he... Starts coming up to the near side of the car, which is Christy's side of the car, and she rolls her window down. Now, if you remember, many years ago, the altercation that I had at the gas station with the guy that I honked the horn at, who came oh, yeah. back in to approach me, he came to Christy's side, and I rolled her window down, mm -hmm. and I've gotten a lot of shit for that ever since because I put her in harm's way by rolling the window down. So in this instance, I remember that in yep. that moment. That's good. He, I mean, he, in fairness, the dude was probably 80. He was walking slow enough you, that you, you I, I started to develop a plan. And as Chris was rolling down the window, I said, don't roll your window down. And I started, I hit the button to roll her window up, which froze the window at her eye level. Oh, wow. And then she looks at me and I was like, ah, yeah. And she lets go and the window goes up. And then I gesture to the guy, come over to my side. Okay, all right. So, now we're talking. Mm-hmm. Then I roll my window down to eye level. I'm not going to give him a full window right. I, where he can get his 80 year old fist yeah. through into my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have to take his 80 year old fist, bring it up above his shoulder level, yeah. and then come down. And he probably can't then, do that. And then the the blow would have been it would have been much more gentle. Right. So I was pretty I was pretty strategic. And you could trap his hand. And I could try to trap his hand. That's right. right. Yeah. And then, I see where you're going with this. So I roll my window down just to eye level because I thought out of respect. I don't want him to have to look at me through a window. Out of respect. <laughs> and uh, he's yelling at me before he gets up to the window. But I don't know if it was because he was old or because of his accent, but I could not understand a word this dude was saying. What you do? Okay, he's a smoker. And I just waited for a gap in his tirade, and I said, I'm sorry, sir. And, he, and then he goes back into it again. Well, it didn't bring him down a notch at all. Because yeah, he heard your accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just as I suspected. And I had no clue what he was saying again, and then uh, he, I waited for another gap, and I said, yes, sir. And then he walked back to his car, which was still in the middle of the road, gets back in and drives off. 
And I look over at Christy, and she's. God bless that woman. Just, just, just release. There's a special place just in releasing. heaven. Releasing. There's a special place in heaven for Christy Neal. Thank God that I did not hit that guy. Thank God. Thank the, thank the Kiwi gods. <sighs> it's da- I mean, you know, you're illustrating. It's tough, man. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to just let somebody do that. Like I. I'm actually surprised. I'm not surprised that we don't require any sort of steps in America. There should be a course. You can do anything in America. Without, like you get the rental without, car, you know, at the anything. airport, and 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 you you should but have in to go other through a training. Like, responsible countries like New Zealand, it just feels like there should be well, there should be something. See, like, that's where if you, you're going to rent a car. You have to watch this video. This is where you're wrong. Oh come on, New Zealand is not that type of country. New Zealand, as I discovered, is a fun-loving country of positivity. Everybody's happy, everybody's barefoot, walking around, smiling, having a good time, the friendliest people. You go into a pharmacy when you initially, you eventually find one, and you know what happens? The pharmacist comes out from behind the counter. Barefoot? Barefoot. And and she starts telling you about all the drugs that can help whatever type of hay fever your son is dealing with, and spends time. How does she know eye contact? Hay fever? She just knows it when he walks in. He went through the hay fever door. We had a conversation. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was the thing. It's like they're so freaking helpful there okay. and friendly. You made it sound like she was, uh, you know, clairvoyant. Clairvoyant. Mm-hmm. They're clairvoyant over there. <laughs> um, they're super helpful. And they like to have fun, dude. This is the place where bungee jumping was invented. Now, technically, bungee jumping was invented in Vanuatu yep. by, uh, you know, a woman who wanted to get away from her, her horrible husband. And uh, she survived the fall. The guy didn't. So then women started tying vines to their feet and jumping off towers and oh, they built out of that. twigs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then men eventually said, hey, you women are looking way too cool doing this. So we're going to take that from you. And now we're going to be the ones to do it, which is right, what they did. Right. But then, um, th- I mean, there was some Kiwi dude who uh, basically turned that into a tourism sport of bungee jumping, which we saw firsthand over like people jumping off a bridge and um, you could jump into the, you could dip your toe, you, well, not your toe, that would be jumping backwards. Your head. You could dip your head into the water if you wanted to. You could dunk your whole body into the water you if you wanted to. You didn't do that No. No bungees. I didn't want to do it because I want you and me to do that together. Oh, okay, all right. I'm gonna have to do that for a bona fide video if I'm gonna do something that crazy. Okay. But they, this is where they invented it. You can also do it naked there. Okay. I'm, if you want to I'm strip down that. nude, they will allow that. I don't want to put my eye out. Officially. <laughs> you supply your, I supply my own bungee cord <laughs> for that one. I think they got it. Hand <laughs> <laughs> uh, <head> fart noise. <laughs> the thing that we did do on the um, shot over river uh, was we, and they tell you you got to do this. They invented this type of boat called a jet boat. Oh, I've seen the It's basically of this. a jet ski with stadium seating for like a river. S- 16 people. And you go on a river and do 360s. Whoa. And th- these are like tight gorges. And these things can go. You can't drive it though, right? No, 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 no. Say, somebody Professional else drivers. And you just buy a hundred eighty nine dollar ticket to sit in there for a twenty five minute ride, and it is. And we did this as a family, and it was. Christy went on this. Christy went on it, and she said, "You know what? I'm excited to go on." Because you weren't driving. I went. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, they can go in like a foot of water. Yeah. Because this jet ski. Uh, propulsion. Yeah. It, it it pulls water in and then shoots it out these jets that are like, you know, it's low profile, and they go fast. And they can turn on a dime, like literally 360. And um, you're going through these tight gorges, and they the pilot makes it look like the front of this thing is going to hit the side of the gorge, and then you're like you're like skidding out, and it was super thrilling. But when we we're watching other people do it, waiting in the line, and 
But there's no orientation. There's, and I'm pretty sure there was no waiver to sign. Now, we really? got in a line. They said, anything that's valuable, anything that um, you don't want to get wet, you can put in a locker, and then you put on a, uh, you put on a PFD. They did, they did put a life vest on you. And then you get in, and you sit down, and then the pilot just holds up a placard. It's like, keep your arms inside of the vehicle. You don't want to put your arms on the outside. That, the difference between an Aussie accent and a Kiwi accent, as far as I can tell, is just the inflection at the end. So, keep your legs inside of the vehicle is my Aussie accent. It's great, isn't it? My Kiwi accent is, keep your legs inside of the vehicle. That's that's the difference. Okay. That's all that's the only difference in accents. Okay. That is the only thing that he told us. There was no seatbelt. There was a bar and he said, "When I do this, making a circular symbol, that means we're going to do a 360." And you might want to hold on at that point. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is the safety orientation. Right. I mean, I mean, in America, I guarantee you, I'd have had to go through a class, and I guarantee you, I'd be wearing a seatbelt. Now, maybe there's something about being a boat, and if it turns over, you'd rather get tossed out. I don't know. Yeah, but that's why you don't wear seatbelts in boats. You'd still wear one in America. My point still kind of stands. They like to have fun over there. We had a blast. Christy loved that. I was like, you love that. You're afraid of flying, you're afraid of going in caves, you're afraid of a lot of stuff, and I respect that. Some of this stuff isn't for everybody. But this was an extreme boating activity. And she's like, I just love being on the water. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Okay, okay wow. This, well, you that's, gotta get a boat, man. I, gotta, I was like, well, I gotta get you on a boat, girl. Yeah, and then when we got off land, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever done. You know, you have those moments where you're like, you just, where the kids are just like exuberant about something. Like Lily was absolutely exuberant about uh, Hobbiton and we, when we, we took a tour to Isengard, we freaking showed up where the, where Saruman's tower was. Of course, there's not one there. It's actually a, like a riverbed. Super picturesque. Where they just kind of digitized it. Yeah, where they digitized it in. But like we literally went, went there. And so to watch the kids, just be ecstatic about it. Uh, Lincoln and I went scuba diving at Poor Knights Islands, which mm. is like an amazing scuba diving experience. Like scuba diving, scuba diving with these rays and lots of fish and uh, how cold was water? These little it was a, it was about the same as as he would wear like a seven mil wetsuit. Mm. Um, he had a head cold leading up to it. I had convinced him that listen, you're probably just going to have to snorkel. You're not going to be able to go because you're not going to be able to clear. Uh, to equalize, but he was able to, and he was able to go, and it was just like, to, for each kid to like have their moment, and for Christy to have her boat moment, and you know, it's like, and then you, as a dad, the thing that I started doing was like, looking at the moments where the kids were deciding to take photos, like that's telling, you know, it's like, when they feel like something's photo worthy. So it's it was nice to see each of them kind of pick their moments, and Lando's was the, uh, was the was the jet boat, but they they do they do love how to have fun down there, and they want you to jump off of stuff. Um, the most thrilling thing for me was we went to Waitomo Caves. Waitomo, I don't know how. Waitomo, Waitomo, um, and saw we we put on wetsuits, we got in inner tubes, and we hiked down into caves where there's like water rushing through it, and we like inner tubed into the darkness and saw glow worms on the ceiling when like we killed our headlamps. This is like- These two, are real? Two and a half hours. Yes, these glow are Glow worms are real? Glow worms are real and it was like- How big are they? You're, they're really small and you're, they, you kill off all the lights and you're like drifting in this pitch black cave river stream and it just looks like constellations. I mean, it was, that was my favorite thing because it was so otherworldly and unlike anything I had ever done, like caves are so cool and like, there were certain points where there would be like waterfalls where you had to line up and put your back to the waterfall 
with the inner tube around your butt and jump backwards into darkness and land in like two meters is pretty fall, far to jump backwards. It's my height. Yeah. So we, we jumped off of a couple of waterfalls, one that was that tall. It, how cold was that water? Uh, that was colder. That was, it was probably, so they give might you have been 60 degrees. That? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, that was thrilling. And the glowworms, as it turns out, are just maggots. They're just oh, flies. Glow maggots. They're, they're fly larvae that poop out a glowy substance that is a lure for the stuff that they eat, like little flies and stuff, insects to go in there, and they go towards the, the glowy thing, but then they've dropped another string, like a silk string, and they get- Catch them. They catch them in that, and then they slurp them up, and they eat them, and they eat these things until they get enough strength to go into a cocoon, mm. and then they, they take that strength of eating that stuff, they make a cocoon, and then they come out the other side as a male or female fly, and then they just, they get together. You really and, listen to the tour guide. All the, and then they, they mate, and then the male dies because he doesn't have any more energy. Oh, gosh. You know, because you know how much energy it takes. Yeah, it does. Everything you got. Especially on the ceiling. And then the female takes the energy she's got, and she, she lays like a whole slurry of eggs up there on the ceiling, and then the first, and then she dies. And then the first one that hatches, eats all the other ones before they hatch so that he can get enough energy to poop out some glow shit and start the whole freaking process over again. Nature what is, is beautiful. The, what is the point of life? All of the beauty of nature is for sex or death. It's for perpetuation. They don't even get enough energy when they turn into flies to, to develop eyes or mouths. They cannot see or eat. All they can do is screw mm. and die. There are worse things. Would you rather only be able to eat or only be able to screw? And it was beautiful. Ask a worm. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever Ask seen a in maggot. a cave. Yeah. We had a wonderful time. It was probably the best trip I've ever been on. Wow. Yeah. So it's better than Australia. It was action packed. And, um, it was more catered towards actual just the enjoyment part, whereas when we were in Australia, we were also touring. And right, was, right, right. Not that that isn't incredibly enjoyable, but it's work at the same time. Right. In the activities we did, like Hobbiton was one of a kind, the Glowworm Cave was one of a kind, the Scuba Location, one of a kind, and then like all of the other Lord of the Rings stuff was really amazing. So like... You it recommend was, it. I, I, I loved it. I love it. I want to go back. I would definitely go back to Queenstown. I loved it there. It was beautiful. I'd like to visit Wellington. Didn't get to go there. Well, I didn't go to New Zealand. No, you didn't. Or Old Zealand. I went to North Carolina. That's okay. Um, I told you that I wanted to have a staycation. That was the plan. We were going to go to North Carolina for a few days. And then come back to L.A. And you said, well, you can tell them. Treat it like a tourist would treat the city. Well, that's a great plan until your son gets the flu. Yeah. And uh, Locke getting the flu really put a damper on the family plans. Um, what were you going to do? Walk around Hollywood Boulevard? No. Well, we ended up going, we like, we went to like, I had never been to the Getty Villa. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is very cool. You we did do that. We did do that. Um, we were going to do... Uh, that light show thing at Descanso, but like, actually that, that, that night it rained, that's why we didn't go, that was before Christmas. But we had, you know, we went to a couple of restaurants and uh, the like the Lakers Clippers game that we went to last night was the, the last thing to do during the break or whatever. But the big plan that we had was to have, and this is Jesse's idea and I kind of was reluctant, but I ended up going along with it, was to have a New Year's party, a New Year's Eve party. And, a big one, right? Well, it started as let's have some friends over, and then she, it, it, then it turned into, well, let's invite, you know, let's invite this person, let's invite this person, and then it was like a last minute thing. Like, There's a certain type of friend that's the threshold friend that if you think about inviting them, then all of a sudden the floodgates open. 
Right, and it was... And you don't tell them that, like that type two, of friend. Two though. weeks before... I mean, we, I mean, this announcement comes out two weeks before New Year's Eve. So this is basically, if you don't have plans... Long story short, when Locke got the flu, he was still pretty much in the throes of it at that time. And we were like, well, we might get the flu. Maybe we've got the flu and we don't know that we've got the flu yet. We don't need to invite a bunch of people to our house to all get the flu on, for the beginning of the year. So we uh, actually we rescheduled the party. So now you can come. Yes. It's a uh, Saturday. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. You're invited. Oh, thank you. You probably already your your family via your wife probably already knows this. Okay. Um, I kind of thought I'd be snowboarding, but maybe I'll be there. Uh, well, if you're snowboarding, it's fine. Okay. So the uh, but what we ended up doing because as the date approached and Jesse and I were not sick and Locke was getting better, but we basically already said, "Hey, we're not doing the party." Um, our good friends Ralph and Heather. We're like, well, if you guys want to come over uh, on New Year's Eve, we, we can hang out on New Year's Eve, just you know, just us. And Ralph really wants to cook. He's a good cook. He's a great cook. And anytime Ralph says that he wants to cook, like Ralph puts my little chicken sandwiches and paella and all, you know, the five things that I've kind of tried to perfect, puts it all to shame. Because I do like this big thing that everyone can eat all at the same time. And Ralph was like, I'm doing a course oh. meal. Let me just show you one, let me just show you one course. This is at someone's home. This is just Ralph in his kitchen making stuff and then bringing it to the table. Wow, there's three plates stacked there. And so this, my friend. Is teetering bacon. Is, no, so this is lobster. Oh, butter poached lobster, and then on top of it is that's potatoes. He, he teetering taters, and then some sort of leeks or something, and some sort of beet. So I don't. This is just one of like seven. This man's a maniac. Wow! And it was just for us, and uh, he had the French Laundry cookbook. Now. Just so you understand, like this is like one of the best restaurants in the world. It's the kind of thing that if I were to look at the French Laundry cookbook, I would be I would be lost immediately and not able to follow any of the steps because it requires all this background culinary knowledge that he just has. Well, you have to be Swiss, um, more French, and um, he's Swiss though. He's Swiss, and it was freaking incredible. I and I was just wow. like I was, I kept telling him I was like Ralph, this is. Um, this is so much better than it needs to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, we we didn't need it to be this excellent of an experience. And then we were all joking about, Ralph, you should open a restaurant. And then we realized it would just be called Ralph's. <laughs> and then we realized yeah. that that's a grocery store. And yeah. so it would be confusing. And so then we determined that it would be called Ralph's, and then in parentheses, not the grocery store, yeah. the restaurant. Kind of undersells it. But uh, that's good to lower expectations. So anyway, better than it needs to be. That was uh, so good. that was I gotta say, you know me, I like to eat. That was the highlight of my of my break was the food and specifically the food provided to be to me by my Swiss friend Ralph. The highlight of New Zealand was not the food for me. You notice I didn't talk about that at all. They call bur burgers with chicken chicken burgers. They call chicken sandwiches chicken burgers. Okay. Eh, I don't love that. You don't tip there. It's no, included in the... Well, there's no tipping. So as nice as everybody is... Well, that means they probably pay people fair wages. I do think that that is what happens, but I, as nice as everybody was, the service was not great at restaurants. This is like people don't expect it to be that great. And because they're not... And I think that the tipping thing is part of that. Was there any... Um, I know that you were more in like adventure mode, but when you were in the cities... Was there like, tonight we're going to this nice restaurant. Yeah, we, uh, and ate it, some of the best Indian food I've ever had. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, it's gonna sound like I'm talking about London here. I also ate some of the worst Indian food I've ever had too, but it was oh, just, you went Indian we, were out, we were outside of town. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the best thing that they have are meat pies. And you can just get them 
everywhere. Gas stations, it's, it's very similar to Australia. We need that here. We need more meat pies. Now, there's certain, and you can find a couple of places that'll have a meat pie, but like, they have them everywhere, like steak and cheese, venison and plum. They got good coffee though, right? Like and then Australia? coffee, just like in our experience in Australia, especially Melbourne, like they care about coffee. Every sign, like when you're driving down the road, there'll be signs for two things, coffee and toilets. Mm. Like they care about, and those things go, go together. Hand in hand in, they right. go hand in hand in hand. But as a coffee needer, as a coffee addict, like that matters to me. Like, where am I gonna get my next coffee? Where's it gonna come from? You never have to worry about that in New Zealand because everybody's constantly worrying about it. And the, thi the thing that gets me about toilets though is that they call bathrooms toilets. I don't like that. Uh, it's like, don't. What do they call the toilet, the commode? They just call it, to I don't know. I guess they call it toilets. Cause I mean, it is a toilet, but like, and there be signs everywhere that just say toilets. It's like, don't. Yeah, I don't want to think about that. I don't, don't say, don't put, don't say toilets. Just, you could say restroom, bathroom. But they don't think say. about it in the same way. No, and they say it to you too. It's like toilet. They say it. They say the word toilet. But it it's makes a, more sense. Uh, How often do you bathe in the bathroom? But restroom, that's nice. It's like, oh, a little respite here. A little, I, take often, a little seat. How often do you rest? I saw a guy um, at the, the, the uh, Getty Villa who came into the restroom while I was in there, and boy, did he rest when he ur urinated. You know, like, putting your arm up on the wall over the urinal and just going, uh, like, yeah. like getting ready to nap standing up while you piss? Yeah. What is that about? Maybe he saw some really breathtaking art and he was just, you know, completely pooped. <laughs> I think some people, when they release down there, it just, like, it ripples through everything. But why do you got to put your whole, like, it was like, Arm on the wall, head into the I arm, don't know. and just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. It's like he was experiencing the best thing ever, and it is pleasurable. You were jealous. But I don't want to be touching. No. Why do people, when they're at a water fountain, like, Suc suckle? I see people like, they, they like push it, the, and then they'll just like, I haven't like, seen that since <laughs> grade school, man. <laughs> well, go All to right. an airport. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. I don't get on those water fountains at airports, man. All right. And that leads me to my wreck this week. Uh, wreck, baby, wreck, baby. First one of 2024 from me. I know it's our second episode, but right. it's the first one we've done in 2024. Uh, never use the shorter water fountain because more people suck on it. <laughs> That's your. Wreck. That's my belief. <laughs> that is my belief. <laughs> that I mean, because the kids, kids will suck on a water fountain. Kids will suck on a water fountain. They will. And if you and if there's two, go to the higher one. Mm. And then I always do. Yeah, you do. So I guess I'm in the clear. You still look like a giraffe at a stream. Yeah. <laughs> so we're back at it, y'all. We survived. My family survived. See, that's what Christy does. <laughs> Slow breath out. I love New Zealand. I highly recommend it. Um, me too. <laughs> 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 all right. Let us know. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. What you thinking about all this? Remember, leave us a review wherever you listen to this. It is very helpful, especially if it's a positive review. Especially. So if this show means something to you, put it in a review. That would mean something great to us. And, and if you have a question yeah. or a comment, just want to tell us something, then you can call the voicemail number at one eight 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 earpod one Talk at you next week. Hi, Rhett and Link. I am stuck in traffic, and I just wanted to say that I don't think I could get through bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic for 40 minutes in a sane, healthy well-behaved manner at work if I didn't have ear biscuits.